Travis Wayne Goods all. Looks like we get to do a special edition church news weekend. <clears throat> Even though this was way back on Thursday, Friday, Friday. And so uh, there's one that they snuck in on, or they're claiming Thursday, but it was not there on Thursday. Nonetheless, I've been talking about it. So, the, the Church of Jesus Christ donates specialized pediatric wheelchairs for uh, Jordanian children. And that's an outright lie. Church didn't donate them. In order for the church to donate them, the church has to spend of their money, which all gets donated to the church. <laughs> and then they have to purchase the specialized pediatric wheelchairs and then they directly give them to the Jordanian children. This is all a lie. That's not how the church does things. They went to a Mormon who does make specialized pediatric wheelchairs and says, we want you to donate pediatric wheelchairs so that we can claim that we did it. That you're gonna give them to the Jordanian children. That's how we got the Shanghai Temple. In case you all forgot. <coughs> and so, yeah, this is all a, an attempt to bribe and to weasel their way in to doing missionary work in Jordan. As uh, there was a museum in the mid east, west of the United States, can't remember which state it was in, it was to uh, the church gave money, donated money. Uh, so that the native Indians could have a museum for their history. And so the church, in giving the money, had missionaries set up booths at the museum recruiting for membership. The natives returned the money. So this is what criminal organizations do. They compromise you by giving you something and then holding it over you. Hey, we gave you that money. We gave you those wheelchairs. We gave you the such and such. You owe us a favor. The least you can do is let us recruit to our church to pay back the money that we donated to you. It's a pure evil practice. And so now you know the rest of the story. Thank you, Paul Harvey. The late, great Paul Harvey. That's Paul Harvey, right? Really didn't listen to a show, but I'm familiar with. Now you know the rest of the story. <clears throat> anyway, it's more of my mom's and grandma's generation. They were the ones that would watch it, not my grandpa's. <laughs> and here's one that unless you know factual information on the subject matter, you're not going to catch it. You're just going to keep your faith promotion bubble and maybe blow it up a little bit.
And so, yes, there are kids put forth in the picture as shields to show how great the church is. And uh, other, uh, others who are black with white shirts and ties to show that the church is no longer racist since 1978. The blacks too can pay the extortion price and go to the temple and and thus be sealed to their prostitutes for time and all eternity. <coughs> Just like white people. And so the, the title is The Continuing Restoration of the Church in South Sudan. Now this may be confusing for Mormons because they don't know definitions. <sighs> Restoration. The action of returning something to a former owner place or condition. Hmm. So when was South Sudan established with the church? Give you a hint. Never. It's supposed to be the establishment of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in the South Sudan. <sighs> kind of a technical issue. Because otherwise you're going to go on a big old tangent away from truth. You're not going to understand. And if you're thinking, no, Jesus, no, not Jesus. Not just because Constantine created Jesus, but if you're going to believe the lie, Jesus never went down to the South Sudan, neither did the apostles, because you're assuming it's literal history that Constantine said it was. And so, let's see, which map is first? I think it's this map. South Sudan is uh, right to the west of Ethiopia in North Africa. Uh, nope, that's the... Well, we'll give you this. So, under Constantine, the uh, one map shows the extent of Constantine and its patches throughout the Middle East, or throughout the Mediterranean. And so, you see, in Spain, there's a few splotches, and the North African tip at the beaches, you see splotches. You see a splotch in Egypt. You see a splotch in, the, in Israel, or they call it Palestine by then. It's just, dear God, guys, get to. <laughs> you see splotches in Italy, splotches in Europe, uh, and splotches in Greece, and splotches in Turkey. After the creation of Christianity, it's all a solid. Christian base in all of those splotched areas, except for England. So King Arthur lied to us. <laughs> Canterbury was not occupied by Christianity. <laughs> According to this map, why would they lie? 
And so, yes, another why is, hey, that was the same one. The spread of Christianity, <clears throat> uh, Bible history online, so I'm sure we can trust them. They're saying pre-Constantine spread of Christianity. What's the error? Anybody? Anybody? Christianity was created by Constantine. Therefore, Christianity did not exist prior to Christianity. There was no spread of Christianity prior to the creation of Christianity. That's what's wrong with this. But anyway, you see that uh, they're claiming uh, Ir Irenaeus in 185 AD is the purple. And so you see Carthage in Africa, uh, you see Rome in Italy, and you see Athens in Greece, and you see Turkey into the um, Israel area, and you see Egypt, and, and some islands. And then by the time that Constantine begins, and then we're supposed to actually go to the real map, that I went over earlier. Now you see that there's some green and it's more dominantly spread than what the other map claims of the splotches just after Constantine. God. Just so evil. And so yes, Christianity never got down to the South Sudan. That was a much later development. And so if you're thinking that the church still somehow has got to be true, <laughs> then you have to claim that Christianity is true. That there was no apostasy period. And they won't do it, will ya? Come on. And so, yeah, it's a blatant, outright lie. And now I'm sure that it was just a worker for the church news. Let's see if we can find who's to blame and mock them. <laughs> oh, now they explain it. Yeah, the subtitle. After an 11 year pause due to a civil war. See how deceptive this was? The church once again has legal status and a new branch in South Sudan. God, it's just so evil. And so, yeah, it's manipulative. It's like Nelson coming out and saying, we now have the Book of Mormon in Egyptian. Mormons go nuts. Yay, church is true. It's just like the gold plates. Arabic. It was a person living in Egypt. God. Is it? Oh my God. It's like saying that the Book of Mormon is written in the United States of America. That's what it means. It's not written in Egyptian. <laughs> it's written in American. <laughs> it's just... <sighs> just want to scream. Just want to scream. Come on, Travis. They're, they're, they're striving. That's all the prophet expects from Mormons now. They just have to strive. They don't actually have to be. That was dead Hinckley who said we had to be. 
We no longer have to be. We just have to strive. So, the other one I was checking out, and I really wasn't going to because this was a stupid thing. <laughs> we all know why. <laughs> Elder McKay, liar for the Lord at the moment, as the church historian, explains why the church purchased the Kirtland Temple. We all know why. Dear God. And so, clicking on it and seeing the subtitle. <laughs> the significance of what happened in this temple cannot be overstated. The church historian and recorder says. And so why did the church purchase it? Well, it's a part of church history. They claim Joseph Smith and the Book of Mormon. And so it never made sense to Mormons why we didn't own the Kirtland Temple. Why that community of Christ owned the Kirtland Temple. How did they get it? They're not the true church. And so, yes, the Kirtland Temple, under the control of the community of Christ, exposed this church of Jesus Christ of Brigham Young as a fraud that they've been lying to us. I'm getting told in seminary, Emma was wicked, and so she didn't go with Brigham Young. Her feelings were hurt. She wasn't reading the Book of Mormon. She wasn't going to church. <laughs> but Joseph Smith said that he would go to hell to save Emma. Just, why are Mormons still Mormon? God. And so it doesn't occur to Mormons why the community of Christ do not have underwear. They go commando. <laughs> now the covenant underwear that they don't have an endowment ceremony. They don't do baptisms for the dead. And you just shake your head and go, oh my God, Mormons have been indoctrinated and they're drinking the Kool-Aid. And I meant to talk about this first and I forgot. <laughs> and so 19 minutes in where everybody left. Deep Space Nine saw the episode today in which Goldicott, after having murdered Dax, had fled and had become a religious leader to a, a rebellious, unwanted Bajoran faction. And he was deceiving them into getting them to have faith that he was speaking for the gods. That his word and visions were directly from the gods and they believed and they were told to have faith, just trust him, trust in the gods. He speaks for gods. And, and, and so women were getting pregnant and the babies were looking like Goldicott rather than daddy. He's telling them it's a miracle from the gods. It's a sign that he has favored us. <laughs> oh my god. 
and oh my god and so as the the as uh kira was kidnapped and taken there to show how awesome he is <laughs> and she's spreading doubt it's <laughs> not being faith promoting <laughs> the people begin to doubt and so <laughs> creates murder pills <sighs> and he calls them all to a final group meeting where they're all going to partake of the murder pills and meet the pro or meet the gods in the clouds of heaven for Armageddon the rapture It was a very disturbing episode. <sighs> very disturbing, and it, that I just I don't, I don't I don't get that kind of thinking. But that's Mormons. The prophets could literally do that. Everybody gather. Here's some Kool Aid. We're going to meet Jesus in the clouds. I have spoken with Jesus face to face in the Holy of Holies. The construction workers allowed me to go to the Holy of Holies among the construction that's still going on, which is also an update on that. Still unfinished. Palace wasn't finished. Throne wasn't finished. So Jesus didn't suddenly come to his temple and they tried to cover it up by purchasing the Kirtland Temple saying that Joseph did it yeah but not you Nelson you were supposed to do it you didn't Jesus didn't show oh but he's in the clouds waiting for you Travis don't fear the Reaper <laughs> YouTube will never bother you again And so, yeah, and Nelson gets up, well, he sits down, <laughs> he's, he's still a cripple from last 9-11, so 6 p.m. tonight, guys, 9-11, Jewish calendar, <laughs> we're on high alert for the prophecy of Islam, they don't prophecy, they don't believe in prophecy, but... The Quran changes the story of Abraham sacrificing Isaac. And those changes are tonight at 6 p.m. in the signs in the heavens. So let's find out. Are the non-prophets prophets? That will be fascinating to find out. And will be hilarious because it's 9 11 again. <laughs> Which means Joseph Smith will be true. <laughs> because 2 9 11 is 9 22. And when did the messenger come to Joseph Smith warning him of the latter days? Hilarious. 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 <sighs> <laughs> we'll see. Maybe it's not this 9 11. I don't know. <sighs> Dear God. And so, there's some disturbing things in this first paragraph that I literally burst out laughing. <laughs> literally. That's why I'm doing this video, because I burst out laughing. Otherwise, I wouldn't have done a video for this. <clears throat> Some may wonder why the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints would ever spend significant money
And that's why he's church historian. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you see, Mormons don't get it. They did not listen to the anti Mormon, anti Christ, Korahor news. Whistleblower. <laughs> 2019, December. Whistleblower of Enzyme Peak Advisors, where only the 10% of tithing gets laundered into. Oh my god. Two hundred billion are being hoarded at that time. It's gaining seven billion dollars in interest annually. Increasing every year because of the extra interest that keeps being added to it. Whew. And says that the church no longer needs to pay tithing anymore. Because it, it in and of itself, Enzyme Peak Advisors, alone, because the church has dozens of other sources of revenue, you know, like whale chairs for the South Sudan or Jordan. Oh, God. <clears throat> and so, yeah, the church's total asset value is super massive. And we won't go into the guesstimate of how much the church is actually worth. We're just going to stick with Enzyme Peak Advisors. The 10% of the full amount of tithing, 200 billion from 2019. Okay? Because that's an even number, because it's 200 million that the church spent on the Kirtland Temple, conning the community of Christ. Brand new female president. She got conned. Church hates women. They conned her into settling for 200 million. So that the church can look cool and important for conference because they failed to finish the temple. <sighs> Whew. My associated memory makes it so that I don't memorize and so I can't do math in my head. <laughs> 10% of two hundred billion is twenty billion. One percent is two billion. Two hundred million is point one percent. from just Enzyme Peak Advisors, which is just the 10% from the total amount of tithing, which in and of itself can sustain the church forever, with no additional money sent in. That 
means taking care of all of the temples, all the maintenance, all the buildings, all of it. Even the priestcraft for the prophets. All taken care of. Forever. <laughs> Point one percent for the Kirtland Temple. <laughs> Do you not understand how badly the community of Christ got screwed? Oh my god. Whew. And so, to put it in a, a more realistic understanding for us poor people, $200, okay? <laughs> 10% of $200, we have to give $20 to the church. That means no diapers, no rent, no electricity, no water. <laughs> no, no gas for the car to get to work to get the two hundred dollars. No food. Because <laughs> the church comes first, and so one percent is two dollars. Okay. And, and so point one percent is twenty cents. To see how the church is pulling the wool over Mormon's eyes, deceiving them. It's just abominable. <clears throat> and so, yeah, Nelson gets up and botches the whole Kirtland Passover experience. They say that it's Easter, which it was, <laughs> but it was Passover. We're Jewish, we're not Christian. <sighs> Dear God. And so, yeah, he goes on to talk about, oh, it's significant because the this, this significant priest and keys were given to Joseph Smith and the church doesn't even get them right. Peter, James, and John didn't show up. <laughs> they claim that's to lead the kingdom. <sighs> God. It's just pathetic. They just keep you dumb. Literally, keeping you dumb. So, yeah, section 107. Joseph Smith is talking to the newly organized missionary 12 with the keys of Peter, James, and John for preaching the Book of Mormon as Jewish to warn Americans about the latter days and the enemy threat that will want to cause utter destruction. They failed just like Nelson failed. But the restoration of Armageddon I like that title. <laughs> Is this year? Everybody knows it. Everybody's talking about it throughout the whole nation. We all know it's coming. Trump himself has said it will be done. Whether he wins or whether he loses. If he wins, he's getting revenge. If he loses, he'll cause war and destroy America. He'll still destroy America if he wins, but... 
God. And there are just people who go, yeah, let's destroy America. Those deep state Dems. And they don't think, why is Trump allowed to run for president this year? It's because the deep state Dems failed. <sighs> Nobody thinks. And so, section 110 is the Passover experience. And so Bruce R. McConkie, he's going to talk about Passover, right? <laughs> yeah, Mr. Messiah series is going to talk about the Jewish Christ. Whatever. will know no better then than I know now that the Jewish Christ is evil. Jesus prevails. Visions manifested to Joseph Smith the prophet and Oliver Cowdery in the temple at Kirtland, Ohio, April 3rd, 1838. The occasion was that of a Sabbath day meeting. Oh, on Saturday? prefaces his record of the manifestation with these words. <laughs> I assisted the other presidents in distributing the Lord's Supper to the church. Last Supper, the Jewish Passover, with the sacrifice of the Lamb. Revelation 19, the wedding, supper, feast of the Lamb at the Zion Temple in the latter days. April 2024. The Lamb showed up. Jesus didn't. <sighs> Receiving it from the Twelve, whose privilege it was to officiate at that at the sacred desk this day. They just stripped it of all its symbolic meaning and latter-day prophecy and revelation. Just like the Methodist preacher, there are no such things as prophecy and revelations in these days. They were done away with. <clears throat> and so, Joseph Smith gets Keys. And the first person to show is not Jesus. Especially Christianized Jesus. It's Jehovah. When is Jehovah first named? In scripture Genesis chapter 2 verse 4 what is the context in which he is given the new name Jehovah what was his original name we don't know the book of, or the Bible is not translated correctly like Joseph Smith said it needed to be in the King Follett sermon it's Yah Genesis chapter 1 is Yah, son of Yah, was assigned to create heaven and earth. So Genesis chapter 2 verse 4 he is given the new name Yahweh, having completed 
his earthly ministry. His work on earth, according to the Jewish author of Genesis chapter 1. Now the Book of Mormon tells us that the Bible came from the Egyptian documents. Remember the brass plates? It contains the writings that are in the book written by Jews that was tampered with by the great and abominable church. But the brass plates contains more. And it's all in Egyptian. It's the Heliopolis creation story. Where Adam and Lilith have naughty naughty. Father Atom, his grandfather technically, tells Father Shu, you gotta keep them separated. And so he lifts up the heavens Separating from the waters below, dry land appears. Ta -da. The linear script for Yah. Heaven, Earth, Shoe. The Z of Zeta of Greek. The Zeta of Greek. The creation glyph of the Egyptians. Yeah. It's actually Za, because Zeus, that's who he is in Greek. Yah was a result of the Babylonian captivity, Semitic languages, which is only called Semitic because biblical scholars who were archaeologists said, oh, the Bible says that Shem owned the land of, yeah, Babylon. Nope, Egypt. He's Amun. Shem means name. The name of God is Amen from in Isaiah, Emmanuel, El is God, God Amen. The Egyptian sun god at noon day. And so, oh wow, look at that. His countenance shone above the brightness of the sun. And so Ishmael, anybody watch that video? These are rare videos because of the abuse I'm getting from YouTube. I am not able to watch my own videos and therefore I cannot trigger the algorithms of YouTube to get more people to have my videos recommended to. They did this on purpose to shut me down. <clears throat> so yes, I've taken a huge hit for what? Because YouTube are white supremacist Christian nationalists of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, criminal cyber terroristic haters. This is exclusive information, because remember, I'm the authority. Did you get allowed to see that video? That was just today. <laughs> and so Ishmael, that's the Yod at the beginning, the Z for Yah. And then Shem, name. So name of Yah is, this is what's understood when you have two words put together. It's either of or is. It could be the same name. Yah is name. Name is Yah. Name of Yah 
is, there's L for God, and then, oh, the universal symbol of the sun. The name of Yah is Sun God, Emmanuel. Fun to decipher Paleo Hebrew in six months. Don't know why William Foxwell Albright had to take Sir Alan Gardner's advice and botch it all by claiming the acronym theory of the Babylonians. God. And so, what is his keys? I just told you. None of the prophets seers, revelators, they don't claim translator, they don't claim the keys of what's coming to be president, will ever tell you. Oates did a talk saying that the key of creation still has yet to be given to the earth. Your big clue, he has no clue. That's it right there. The key of creation was given to Joseph Smith on Passover of the Jews at the Kirtland Temple by the one holding the keys of creation himself, Jehovah, the Egyptian creation glyph, Heliopolis, Sun City. And Mormons still stay Mormon. They don't listen to me. They don't understand. They don't see that the punishment I'm getting, the torture, the abuse, the hate, the attempted murder, they don't understand what they're doing. Or do you? So, we go down to verse 11. After this vision closed. So it's not literal history. It did not literally happen. Vision. Uh-oh. Church can't be true now, huh? Wait a minute. The first and second visions. Oh, crap. Remove Christianity from your brain. If your brain offendeth thee with Christianity, pluck it out. <laughs> Numbers. You know, the Torah of the Jews. The secondary source to refer to if you can't find the answer in Deuteronomy. The Law. Chapter 12, Miriam and, Miriam and Aaron are forming a coup against their brother Moses. They're going to replace him, change it to Christianity with a golden calf. Have everybody have an orgy. <laughs> you never read the story of the post-exodus in Sinai? Well... It's hilarious. <clears throat> and so, Yahweh comes to Miriam and Aaron. Uh-oh. <laughs> Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, not striving to be a prophet, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. Now, of course, you still have to use fruit because he could be lying like Goldicott. <sighs> 
thus visions for all the keys authority and they're claiming the keys of Peter James and John for authority they don't have and so because they don't have Moses's keys they switched them because Moses's keys is the Exodus keys The gathering of Israel from the four parts of the earth and leading the ten tribes from the land of the north. That's the exodus of the latter days. Deuteronomy, the law of the Jews about their Christ in the future, a prophecy, a revelation, a man like Moses, whose name is Amon, the sun god at noonday. Not Jesus is next, technically. Just the wrong God title name. So, section 107, verse 91. The president of the church. Joseph Smith is still the chief elder of the church. He's telling everybody we need to get the temple built. So that he can have this experience and get those keys to be the president of the church. Melchizedek. King. Christ. And high priest. And thus... Amen in Paleo Hebrew is the universal symbol of the sun. An M for high priest. An N for king. Melchizedek. The real acronym of Paleo Hebrew. Dumbass William Foxwall Albright. Because it's a visionary language. That's where he went wrong. And so, yes, to be the president of Joseph's church is to be the Christ. The Messiah for Mormons. Because there is no Jesus. It's not Christianity. And so Joseph is Messiah Ben Joseph. Your Christ. And what happened to your Christ? You murdered him. You paid the Judas price with a secret combination economy called tithing, which would become section 119 after Joseph died. And you murdered him. You murdered your Christ. But you fulfilled prophecy because Messiah ben Joseph is prophesied to be murdered by the enemy. And thus the real restoration in the latter days of another Mormon who is the Christ of Christ's. Messiah ben David. This is his symbol. You have to include the universal symbol of the sun around the Star of David. This is how evil Mormons become because the church purposely makes you stupid by withholding information from you, keeping you from studying. So what? That you can take the little murder capsule to meet Jesus in the clouds. You are no different. And so, Elias is wrong. How do I know this? 
Everybody complains that it's the Greek form of Elijah, the Hebrew. And that's where they complain with the, the New Testament, with the Mount of Transfiguration, which is section 110. Jesus is Joseph Smith, and then Moses and Elijah. And it's also a dualism for the latter days. But it's all the same guy. All these guys. Jehovah, Moses, Elias, which is actually Elishua, we'll get to it. And then Elijah. God Yah. What is the name of Yah? Sun God. Ishmael. They're all the same people. They're just different keys of authority from the same source origin. And so Elias appeared and committed the dispensation of the gospel of Abraham. That's the keys. Dispensation of the gospel of Abraham saying that in us and our seed, all generations after us should be blessed. Okay, so what's the gospel of Abraham? Did they footnote it correctly? No. Oh, wait a minute. I see nine for blessings. Let's see if it's it. Yep, it is. They put it in the wrong verse. Because they don't know. Verse 11, Abraham chapter 2. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curse thee. And in thee, that is, in thy priesthood, and in thy seed, that is, thy priesthood, for I give unto thee a promise that this right, authority, shall continue in thee and in thy seed after thee, that is to say, the literal seed. Not Hamuzion seed from the Holy Ghost, not exalted seed of a father raping his daughter and abandoning her with a bastard son. Literal seed. When Matthew says Jesus is supposed to be prophesied to be of the literal seed of David, you can't have Holy Ghost or Heavenly Father. There has to be an actual human, as the Ferengi, Ferengis pronounce it. <clears throat> Shall all the families of the earth be blessed, even with the blessings of the gospel, gospel of Abraham, which are the blessings of salvation even of eternal life it's not Elias it's Elishua Shua is salvation salvation as the keys of the gospel of Abraham which is the blessings of salvation God of salvation El Shua easy why does everybody miss it and then Elijah who's suddenly coming to his temple they at least told us that in seminary. That it was Passover. Oops, you weren't supposed to tell us it was Passover. 
You're going to have to be excommunicated. I'm telling the bishop. <laughs> bishop, the seminary teacher is teaching us Judaism and not Christianity. Get him. Teenagers wouldn't be that mean, would they? And so, see how the church leaders are false? No? Still gonna worship Jesus, huh? Still went to church today, huh? Because why? Your ward is special and gave you wallets? <laughs> the women always get something special, like a rose or chocolate. <sighs> or diamond rings. If you're on the east side, <laughs> up in the hills. <laughs> oh my god. It's been unplugged, or it's been plugged in the whole time. I hope you can hear me. You should be able to hear me because there's a speaker in the camera. This will be sad if all this hour I'm not able to be heard like on my laptop. Ah, dear God. And so, I mean, come on, guys. Seriously. I just demonstrated I have the authority, I have the keys, I have the gifts of prophet, seer, revelator, and translator, yet again. How much more do I have to do until you're convinced? Well, we don't like your tone. <laughs> you need to pacify, flatter, and deceive us, then we'll listen. Oh, God. You need to have more flashy entertainment lights. <laughs> You're boring. Your room's a mess. <laughs> we don't like you. You're just making excuses not to believe. That is a form of hate and denialism. You know the church is false, and you still are stubborn and full of hate. God, the things I do for you guys, just not appreciate.